Mary Tudor was born on March 18, 1496. She was the youngest child of King Henry VII to reach to adulthood. In Mary's lifetime, she would become the Queen of France and the Duchess of Suffolk. Like her brother, King Henry VIII, she loved fashion, dancing, and also parties. Mary was first betrothed to Charles of Spain, the future Holy Roman Emperor, and also the nephew to Catherine of Aragon. By May of 1514, Mary was 18, beautiful and headstrong. May of 1514 was also the date of the wedding, but the betrothal had been cancelled. King Henry VIII's replacement was Louis XII, King of France. Louis was 52, pockmarked, and had gout. This was not Mary's ideal husband. This is why she proposed a deal to her brother. That when King Louis died, she could marry a husband of her choice. Henry agreed, because he loved her, and he wanted her to marry Louis without argument. A proxy wedding took place at Greenwich Palace on August 13, 1514. King Louis's proxy was Duke de Longueville. Mary received jewels and a trousseau. At the end of the wedding, the Duke and Mary laid in a bed together where he touched her with his bare leg to consummate the marriage. King Louis had many more gifts for Mary. He told the English ambassador that he wanted a kiss for every gift Mary would receive. But Mary couldn't leave just yet because of stormy weather in the channel. Henry became impatient and decided to send her off while it was still stormy. Mary left Dover to Boulogne on October 2, 1514. Mary started with 14 ships in her retinue, but by the time she reached port, there was only four with her. The other ten had to dock at other various ports. Mary had to be carried ashore by Sir Christopher Garnish. She traveled from Montreal to Abbeville, and just outside of Abbeville, she accidentally ran into King Louis, and on October 9th, they had another wedding. Henry sent Charles Brandon to visit the newlyweds on a diplomatic trip. He must have been overjoyed when Charles wrote that Mary had carried herself majestically. Mary was married for only 82 days before Louis suddenly died on December 31, 1514. Louis was very active when alone with Mary, and this may have contributed to his death. According to custom, after the king's death, Mary was taken into seclusion for 40 days. This was done just in case the queen was pregnant, therefore the paternity of the child couldn't be called into question. After some time, it was clear that Mary wasn't pregnant. Mary was then sent to Palais de Cluny to mourn without her English ladies-in-waiting. This was ordered by the new King of France, Francis. He sent several French women instead to attend Mary. Still shut away from the world, Mary wrote to Henry asking him if she could come home and also reminded him of his promise. If the promise wasn't kept, she wrote, then she would become a nun. Francis knew that the English-French alliance was breaking down, not wanting Mary wedded off to a Protestant Habsburg prince. He visited Mary multiple times and stirred up her fears of being married to someone not of her choosing. He suggested she wed the Duke of Lorraine or the Duke of Savoy. Around this time, Mary confessed her secret. 
Henry decided to send Charles Brandon to bring Mary home and to also negotiate about what she would receive from her marriage, like money, jewels, and property. He also might have chosen Charles because he was Mary's secret love and thought he would be a comfort to her. Henry, Mary, and Charles had grown up together at court. Charles's father was Henry VII, standard bearer at Bosworth Field, and was unfortunately slain. After that, Charles stayed at court to be a playmate for Arthur, then later Henry. Henry might have been a little nervous, sending him to France, knowing Charles to be a very ambitious man. So he made him promise that he would keep things formal with Mary. Charles arrived in France five days later and was summoned by Francis to a private meeting. The king asked Charles if he had come to wed Mary. Francis then shared Mary's secret and reassured Charles that he would write King Henry to explain everything. Charles refused and wrote an account of the meeting to be sent to Wolseley. Afterwards, he went to Mary, where she told him of her brother's promise. She also issued Charles an ultimatum, to marry her now or never at all. Charles was very conflicted. He had made a promise to Henry, but his enemies on the Privy Council wouldn't allow him to wed Mary once back in England. Charles caved and secretly wedded Mary sometime in February 1515 at Cluny Chapel. The newlyweds felt the consequences right after. Francis insisted that Charles concede in several disputes over Mary's dowry as payment for his silence. Henry and Wolseley had wanted Charles to refuse Francis' demands. At the time, Mary thought she might be pregnant, and rumors were spreading through Paris about their secret marriage. Mary and Charles wanted a more public wedding. A public wedding couldn't be so easily annulled. So Charles wrote a letter to Wolseley, confessing and seeking support. The most important issue was how would Henry react? Brandon had committed treason, marrying Mary without the king's permission. Henry was angry, and he quickly sent his terms. He wanted Mary to pay back her dowry and annual payments of £4,000. That left Mary £6,000 to live on. Mary was also to return all the jewelry that was a part of her dowry and the gifts Louis had given her. The couple were also to write to Henry to beg for forgiveness. They both wrote to him doing just that and putting the blame squarely on the shoulders of Mary. Mary included in her letter the Mirror of Naples, a diamond that was a part of the French crown jewels. Henry didn't respond. On April 16, 1515, the couple left for the coast with some of Louis' gifts that Francis let Mary keep. Mary again wrote to Henry to inform him that they were in Calais and that they wouldn't sail until they had his permission. She also promised that she and Charles would remain in Calais if it was what Henry wished. Henry gave permission in early May. The couple met with Henry privately at Barking Manor just outside of London. Mary handed over the jewelry, gifts, and signed a contract to repay her dowry. Mary and Charles married again at Greenwich Palace on May 13, 1515. Henry and his current wife Catherine of Aragon attended. The Duke and Duchess of Suffolk were back in the King's favor. Over the next few years, they attended many court celebrations. Mary wasn't pregnant when in France, but did become pregnant a few months after, and on March 11, 1516, gave birth to a son named Henry. 
King Henry and Wolseley were little Henry's godfathers. The summer of 1516, Henry and Mary's older sister, Margaret, came to visit. She also brought along her six-month-old daughter, Lady Margaret Douglas. Henry liked to lecture Margaret about her marital decisions. After the death of Margaret's husband, King James of Scotland, she married the Earl of Angus. Mary was closer to her sister-in-law, Catherine, than her sister Margaret. She even went with Catherine on a pilgrimage in 1517 to pray for Catherine to become pregnant with a son. Mary was back at Richmond Palace in the early summer of 1517, and she was pregnant again. She gave birth on her way home on July 16, 1517. It was a daughter named Frances after the French king. She had another daughter in 1519 named Eleanor. Mary and Charles were back in court in 1518 to attend the betrothal of Princess Mary to the infant Dauphin of France. They also attended the field of cloth of gold that was near Calais in 1520. When Catherine of Aragon was indisposed, Mary would co-host parties with Henry. Mary at this time was in her mid-twenties. At the beginning of the year, in 1522, Mary met Anne Boleyn for the first time. Anne wanted to be one of Queen Catherine's ladies-in-waiting. Mary might have helped her because of Anne's older sister. Mary Boleyn was one of Mary's ladies-in-waiting when she married Louis. Anne became a part of Catherine's household, but was sent home in disgrace for entering into a secret engagement to Henry Percy. Henry Percy was above Anne's station. Mary had been in bad health ever since she had the sweating sickness in 1518. She might have been suffering from the early stages of cancer. She still attended several court functions over the next few years, including a summer party for European ambassadors in 1526. But her physical condition was getting worse, and she was at court less and less. Even though ill, Mary disapproved of Henry's new relationship with Anne Boleyn. Anne had returned to court after being banished for three years for the secret engagement to Henry Percy. Mary made her opinion very clear after making a very public condemnation about Anne. And also, in early 1532, she refused to accompany Henry and Anne to a state visit to France. Mary's last visit to London was to celebrate her oldest daughter's wedding. The Lady Frances married Henry Grey, 3rd Marquis of Dorset, and also a descendant of the White Queen Elizabeth Woodville. Henry and Frances were the parents of Lady Jane Grey. In 1533, Charles was put in charge of Anne Boleyn's coronation so he wasn't at home when Mary died on June 26th in their West Thorpe home. Mary was just 38 years old. Sadly because Anne Boleyn was close to giving birth, Mary's death was not considered to be important news. The last time Charles saw his wife was in early May of 1533. Henry ordered requiem masses to be sung at Westminster Abbey. Mary's body was embalmed and held in state for three weeks. Her funeral procession included clergy carrying the cross, six horses pulling her hearse, many nobles, a hundred torchbearers, and a hundred of Charles's yeomen. Henry and Charles didn't attend Mary's funeral. She was interred at the Abbey of Bury St. Edmunds on July 22nd. Mary's monument and the Abbey was destroyed during the dissolution of the monasteries. Her coffin was moved to the nearby church of St. Mary's, Bury St. Edmunds. 
In 1784, her remains were disinterred by Horace Walpole and the Duchess of Portland. They said she still had two feet of golden red hair, and they cut off pieces of her hair as souvenirs. Shortly after Mary's death, Charles married their son Henry's betrothed Catherine, who was only 14 and Charles was almost 50. Shortly after the wedding, Mary and Charles' son Henry died, probably of tuberculosis. Charles himself died on August 22, 1545, at the age of 60. Mary's death might have been overshadowed by the birth of Elizabeth Tudor, but was greatly mourned by the people of Suffolk County. When alive and at court, people hardly ever called her the Duchess of Suffolk, but called her the Queen of France. La, la.